previously recorded. Hey y'all, it's your girl Tia and I'm gonna be me and today I am coming at you with a Sunday dinner on a Monday. First off, I wanna say welcome to all my new subscribers and welcome back to all my faithful loyal family members. I thank y'all for coming and I hope y'all enjoy yourself over here. First off, I wanna say, another thing I wanna say is, I wanna thank each and every one of y'all that have been patient with me that was understanding to I was just tired on Sunday and I thank y'all for y'all prayers. I really do. I needed some rest and I feel a lot better today than I did yesterday. So I thank y'all for just I thank y'all for just being a good group of family members. I really do y'all. But today is the day that we about to get in here and throw down in the kitchen, y'all. Is you ready or is you ready? I hope you're ready. All right, so what I'm gonna be making is some smothered pork chops, collard greens, corn casserole, mashed potatoes, and maybe some cornbread, but I probably hold off on the cornbread since I'm making the corn casserole. So that's what's on the menu today. I hope y'all is ready. Everything gonna be all together in one video. I hope y'all enjoy this video. And if there's anything that you need to see separately, that's why I was asking if y'all want to see anything separate. But if it is anything that y'all want to see separately that I'm making today, then leave a comment down below and let me know that you want to see something that I have made separately. And when I have a chance, I will do it another time for you, okay? If you didn't get it in this video, how I'm making it. But another thing I want to tell y'all is don't forget to go over and show my second channel some love. I have a second channel. If you was new here and you don't know anything about it, the name of my ch channel is Boss Up Cleaning. That's where I do all my cleaning videos, organization, and decorating and stuff like that. So I would love if you go over and show my second channel some love. And when you do, leave a comment and let me know that you have joined the family. Also, the last thing only thing I ask y'all to do is ring the doorbell every time y'all come over here. All right. Please don't forget before you leave here to ring that doorbell. What I mean by ring the doorbell is hit the thumbs or the like button. That's all you got to do. One time for the one time, if you don't mind. All right. Thank y'all for coming. Let's go on and get into this recipe. All right, y'all. So the first thing we're going to be starting out with is this here. Um corn casserole so the ingredients that you gonna need for the corn casserole is a one box of jiffy mix you're gonna need a cup of sour cream one can of whole kernel corn drained and rinsed I like to rinse my kernel I like to pull the juice off of it and rinse it off and then you're gonna need you a can of cream style corn and sugar sugar is optional but i like to add just a little sugar to mine to give it a little bit more sweetness y'all so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our box of jiffy mix and this is so easy y'all ain't just going somebody probably gonna ask can you use um 
Oh, and you're gonna need some cheese, but you ain't gonna need that till later. But uh, the cheese is also optional now. But um, somebody gonna ask, can, is, is you, can they use uh, regular cornmeal? I will say maybe yeah, but no for me. Because you want the Jiffy Mix, because the Jiffy Mix have that sweetness and that cake-like taste and consistency that you'll be looking for when making this corn casserole. So use the Jiffy Mix, y'all. I'm just looking through to make sure ain't no weevils or nothing in the Jiffy Mix, y'all. All right, so you're gonna take your corn, can of cream corn. Oh, and I forgot butter. I forgot the butter, so you're gonna need a stick of butter. One stick of butter melted. And then you're gonna take your one can of whole kernel corn. You're gonna dump in the cup of sour cream. Okay, so you're gonna add, I done melted my butter, so I'm gonna add the stick of butter to this as well. And then, I'm gonna throw in a little sugar. Now the sugar is optional. So I'm gonna add just a little sugar. You really don't need sugar because the um, the Jiffy is sweet, but I just like to give it just, just a tad bit more sweetness. So now we're just gonna take this here and mix it all together get everything well incorporated you don't need no milk no buttermilk no nothing this is all you need to make this corn casserole and then you're going to use the cheese to go on top of it when it's done that's it but that's why i say the cheese is up to you if you want to use it or not so i'm gonna get all this mixed together then we're gonna move on to the next step so now that I got all this incorporated, what I'm about to do is I have my pan, whatever kind of dish that you want to use. You can use a baking dish. I'm just using an aluminum pan to make easy cleanup. And I'm just spraying it. You can grease it with butter or some oil, whatever you choose. And I'm just spraying mine like that, greasing my pan. Then I'm going to take this mixture and dump it right in this pan. And we're going to put this in our oven that I had preheated on 375 degrees on the middle rack. And we're just going to let this here bake on cover. I don't know how long, so I, you just want to bake until it's not jiggly anymore. When you shake the pan and it's not jiggling like that, it'll look jiggly. So when you shake the pan and it don't look jiggly, then you know you done baked it enough. Stick your toothpick in and see if it come out clean. You baked it enough. So I'm about to put this in the oven and, and let this bake until it's done. y'all so now we're about to work on the collard greens so here i have some neck bones that i have boiled until they was tender and some chicken broth or chicken based seasoning some kind of seasoning just to retain the flavor in the neck bones so i boiled mine in chicken based seasoning and water and that's it until it was tender so what you see here on top is fat we're gonna reserve this liquid from that we boiled the chicken boil the neck bones in and use that when we start cooking our greens now you can use any kind of meat that you want to use whether smoked turkey tails ham hocks neck bones pig tails whatever kind of smoked meat that you like just plain bacon hog jaw bacon it's up to you you do what you want to do because it's yours but i have me some neck bones i really like to use smoked turkey tails but they didn't have any in my stuff so i went ahead and got some smoked neck bones so here i have some smoked neck bones that is tender and what i'm about to do is i'm about to take these smoked neck bones and i'm about to pick them pick the meat off the bone and then i have some hog jaw bacon that i have cut up into smaller pieces and you can use regular bacon it's just gonna be about the same the jahal jar bacon just have you know more of a salt flavor and fat and all that stuff to it then 
and, and, and it's thicker than regular bacon. So you can use just some regular bacon. It's up to you. But this is the two ingredients that you're going to need, you know, as far as the meat goes. Then you're going to need you some bell pepper, onion, bell pepper and onion diced up. Now I have some red, yellow, and orange bell pepper. You could just use regular green bell pepper. It's up to you. Just And, and, and that's going to be just fine. So I have diced that up. So we're going to be using that as well. Now I'm about to pick the meat off the neck bones. And when I do that, I'll be right back. Okay, so here I have my pan and I have heated it up and I have picked all my neck bones off meat off the neck bones and I and I put the bones with it and everything because bones got flavor y'all so what I'm about to do is I'm going to add my hot jar bacon to my pan and we're just gonna cook this up and render some of that fat off of it and let it get a little bit of crisp on it. Okay, so now that I have rendered off some fat from my bacon and got it kind of crispy there. Got it kind of crispy. And I'm, I'm about to take my onions and bell peppers and add that right down in here. And we're about to saute that, that up until it gets tender. Along with that, I am going to add the neck bones and the bones and all that good stuff right on in the meat. And so I'm going to saute all this up until it gets tender. Then we'll move on to the next step. Alrighty, so now that I have the bell peppers, the onion, the bacon, and the smoked neck bones all sauteed together. Now I'm gonna take my clean and wash the greens and I'm just gonna add them right here to the pot. Now what I like to do is I like to cook my greens until they get almost done before or when they get done tender enough to absorb some flavor and um so basically when they get done then I like to uh go in and add me some seasoning because I find that if you wait to add your seasoning, you end up using less of seasoning. And depends on the meat that you're using. Sometimes you may not even have to use any seasoning depending on, you know, how much salt and stuff that you like. So I'm just adding my greens to this. And so now I've got all that done together. And so now what I'm about to do is that broth that I had, I'm just gonna take my broth and I'm just gonna pull that fat and all right in these greens. And that fat is flavor. I'm gonna pull that right there in them greens. And we're just gonna let these greens have cook until they tumble. So One of the things that I am going to add to the greens right now is just a pinch of sugar. So you, that's all you need is just like a little teaspoon of sugar just for, you know, that green taste that it'll take away the green taste that being greens. 
I don't add vinegar to my greens, but if you want to add you some vinegar, then add you about a tablespoon of vinegar to yours, and that'll be good. But I'm about to add a teaspoon of sugar. Get that right in there. And you don't want to add too much to make it sweet. Then we ain't going for sweet greens. We just want to knock out that green taste. That's all. So now I'm just about to take my lid and put it on this right here. And let it go forward and on for about 45 minutes. Then I'm gonna come back and taste it to see if they tell me. You know what green's supposed to taste like? You know, they ain't supposed to have no, when you bite it, they ain't supposed to bite back, okay? So if they got like a little extra chew, then you need to let them cook a little longer. But you want them nice and tender, just like you was to cooking, if you was cooking um, um, cabbages or something. Oh, and one more thing I'm gonna add to this is a teaspoon of minced garlic hold on and this the minced garlic that i have or you can use just some fresh garlic it's up to you and that's all i'm gonna add and then the seasoning is gonna come later so we're just gonna mix that in get the lid on it and let it go Alrighty y'all, so as you can see, we got the corn casserole. It's not jiggly when I shake it, so you know that it's just right. So now what I'm about to do is, I got some cheddar cheese. I started to use some um, Kobe Monterey Jack, but I'm just going to go ahead and use this cheddar. Since I'm not too big of a fan of cheddar, and going to use it up. Um, so what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to put some of that cheddar cheese right on top. And then I'm gonna just put this back in my oven long enough to let the cheese melt. Back in the oven, it goes. All right, y'all, so we about to just stir up these greens and give you a look at what's going on in this pot and all that good stuff. Okay, so at this point, I'm ready to season. So you can season your greens with whatever you want to season them with, but I'm just going to use my seasoning. But you can just go in with your little garlic powder, onion powder, seasoning, salt, um, little black pepper, um, a little cayenne pepper if you want to, just for you know, the little spice and season it to your own taste. So I got all that in there. Stir that together. Mm. And I'm gonna let it cook for a little bit. And then, it ain't done though, but they tender. I can tell they tender because of the color that they use. They start getting darker in color as they start getting done. So, I'm just going to let that continue to cook a little while longer just to get that flavor in that, in the greens and stuff. And at this point, I'm about to add some butter to this as well. Butter gives food its own delicious taste. So, I'm going to add a little butter to that. And you only need about a cup of teaspoons or tablespoons. It's like three tablespoons of butter. I'm just gonna add that right on there now. 
and just let everything cook together. And that's all you need for your greens. Just let them continue to cook until they is all the way tender. 45 minutes or so might be enough time for them. So I'm gonna put my lid back on that and let it finish going. All right, so I have taken the corn casserole out of the oven, and this is what I got, y'all. So now, only thing I'm about to do is cover this up till I'm done with everything else. But that look good, don't it, y'all? Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. So now what we're about to work on is our smother pork chops. So I have my pork chop washed and clean. And I'm about to season them with my seasoning. You can use any season that you want. Just season it to your taste. Make sure it's all seasoned up real good and all that good stuff. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just seasoning with my seasoning. And my seasoning got all the seasoning that I need for these pork chops. I got my pork chop season. I have me some cornstarch, or you can use flour, either or, but I'm going to be using cornstarch. The cornstarch is going to make it a lighter gravy. So I'm going to take about three tablespoons of this cornstarch and put it in my bowl. And this right here that we're mixing up is a slurry. You want the slurry to sit to the side. That way, everything will have time to incorporate by the time you're ready for it. And then I'm going to add a cup of water. And we're just gonna mix this up and it's supposed to be a loose consistency now i'm doing this doing it this way for those of you that does not know how to make a uh, gravy so i'm doing this an easy way for y'all so now that we got that that's all you need right there all right, y'all, so over here in my skillet, I'm gonna be using a stick of butter. You can use margarine, but I'm just gonna use butter. And the reason why I'm using butter is for the flavor that it's gonna give to that gravy, y'all. So I'm gonna use a stick of butter, and we're gonna get that melted around right here in the pan. And I just went ahead and used half a stick of butter because half a stick is plenty enough. So I got half a stick of butter. I've melted that. I have my pork chops, and now I'm about to sear these and let them get brown. You don't need no flour. Just sear the pork chops. Right here in this bowl. Don't overcrowd the pan, because if you overcrowd the pan, it's gonna start making the pork chops start releasing water. And we don't want no water in the pan. We wanna brown these nicely. You're not trying to brown them to get them done. You're just trying to brown them to get some color. That way it'll add a nice pretty color to the gravy.
now I'm about to work on my mashed potatoes. So back here in my pot, I have some water and I'm about to add me some chicken based seasoning or you can use some chicken broth just for that flavor. And a little bit of salt. That way my potatoes will have some flavor to them when they get tender. And so I have me some red potatoes. You do not have to peel them or cut them up, but you can if you want to. And I'm just gonna put them down in the water and let them boil until they get nice and tender, pork tender. And I'm, gonna, I'm about to add some more water to this to cover my ribs. Now be careful when you grind your pork chops that you do not uh, burn your pan because you want to uh, use all the drippings and bits and pieces and stuff that will be in the bottom of the pan for your gravy. So be careful not to burn it. Okay y'all, so here I'm checking my green, ooh, checking my greens again, stirring them up. Y'all look at that look on them. Try. Y'all can feel that look it got some flavor. Okay, so I'm gonna give these a little taste, but and see what they done. And that's it for the green job. That is it. Look at that. That 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 hall jaw bacon. Let me get you in there. Okay, look at that. You got the hall jaw bacon. That 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 um, neck bone. And, and all that flavor off of in them, y'all. And they look so good, don't they? So I'm gonna get this a taste to see if it's done. And that is it for the green. All right, so they need about another, like 20 minutes and they is done, y'all. All right, y'all, so now all the pork chop is brown. So now we about to Move on to the next step. And like I said, make sure, please make sure you don't burn. I'm gonna take my onion and put it down in that pan. And we're about to scrape up all that goodness off the bottom of that pan. That way it don't burn. Because that right there is gonna make a nice pretty color to our gravy. And we're just gonna saute up these onions until they get nice and tender. Alrighty family, so now what I'm about to do is I'm about to take me some water and add it to the pan and just deglaze that pan. Now look how I got that nice brown flavor already, color already. That right there is going to give you some nice flavor to them pork chops. Nice color to them pork chops. And to that, I'm going to add some, I wish you would try the savory sauce, some Worcester sauce, wish y'all know the W sauce. We're going to add just a little bit of that, and that just going to add a little depth to that. Then, to that, we're going to also add a little bit more seasoning. Okay, give that a good little mix. Like that right there. All right, so now we about to start adding in our pork chop. And what we're gonna do is, we're just gonna continue, cause these pork chop, they're not done. So what we're gonna do is we just put these down in here and we're gonna get them covered with enough liquid to finish cooking them. And we wanna cook these until they is nice and tender, falling off a bone. And don't forget to add that juice 
Then I'm going to take that slurry. Remember the slurry we mixed up with the cornstarch and water? We're going to take that slurry and it's been sitting so it's sticking to the bottom of my bowl. We're gonna get this here and we're gonna pull that over it just like that and that right there is gonna give us a nice grab so now i'm gonna take some more water and finish covering it just about all the way we can leave a little bit of pork chop peeking too but mainly this here gonna be covered all the way so that everything will get cooked nice and evenly and I'm just adding hot water to that so I'm just gonna push that all down in that gravy like that we ain't gonna worry about the seasoning if we need any more at this point because once this here get almost done we're just gonna taste our gravy and see if we need any more seasoning and if we do we just gonna go in and add whatever it is that you want to add to it All right, and also, hold on, one more thing I want to add is just a pinch, just a pinch, because this is salty, chicken-based seasoning, just a little bit more, chicken-based seasoning, and that right there gives it more flavor, to get that gravy, some real nice flavor, so we're going to put our lid on that and let that cook until it gets tender. Be sure to stir it occasionally, y'all. Make sure it ain't nothing sticking. Remember, you put that gravy in there, so you just can't let it just, just cook now. You gotta come and make sure you stir it. All right, y'all, so here go the greens. I can turn those off, because it's done. But if you pay attention, y'all, I didn't add no more liquid to these greens. I just let them cook in the, in the, um, the, the, the um, liquid that I added to them from the beginning, and that was it. We got the greens. It's done. Yes, yes, yes. Looking so good in the neighborhood. Okay. All right, y'all. So now it's time to work on these uh, mashed potatoes. And so I have me half a stick of butter. And I'm gonna get that melted in my pot. I have drained off the potatoes. They're in the same draining now. I want all the liquid to just dry, uh, dry off off of them or whatever. And I have me half a block of cream cheese. And I let that sit out and soften. And so I'm going to add that. And I'm just going to incorporate those two together with a teaspoon of minced garlic. So I'm just going to get that all melted and creamy. Okay, so this what I got is all melted and creamy like this too. So now what I'm about to do is I'm about to take the potatoes and add them right in here. like that and they is nice and tender so now I'm about to just take my potato masher and just mash these here up I can turn the eye off because I'm done melting the butter I want to burn potatoes and I like mine's kind of chunky Especially when I'm making homemade mashed potatoes. I did not peel the skins off. You ain't got to worry about peeling the skins. The skin going to make it good. Okay, well. If y'all haven't so far, if y'all don't mind, please ring the doorbell. And, and that's the thumbs up, the like button. Share my video if you would like. If you don't mind, I would love for you to. Okay. 
So now, I got some ranch dressing any kind. I love Hidden Valley. So I'm gonna add me some ranch dressing to this. You can add ranch dress. If you don't like ranch dressing, then add you some sour cream. Either or it will work. So I'm adding the ranch dressing to that. Getting that done all mixed in real good. Then I'm gonna add some heavy whipping cream. And I'm add, you can add heavy cream or milk. I'm just adding the heavy cream because I got it, you know. So I'm adding the heavy cream to help thin it on out. I'm gonna add some of this black pepper. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. Just for that extra flavor. And then we're gonna get this here mixed up. Potatoes, some cream egg. I'm gonna add just a little bit more heavy cream. And then I'm gonna add some parsley. And that's for decoration. You know, to make it look all good and stuff. You don't know. And a pinch more pepper. <clears throat> Hold on, let me go on and add something else. And a little bit of cheese, because we can. It's optional. And mix that on around good. And that just gonna melt right in there when I put that lid on there. Ooh. my mashed potatoes and that's what I got y'all so we're just gonna hit that with a little bit more parsley on top just to make them look all pretty and that's my mashed potatoes y'all alrighty y'all so now it's time to check these pork chops baby yeah. See what they're hidden for, hidden for. Look at that. I gotta make this little flim pull on y'all. Alright, y'all. So, we got the pork chop and this gravy. Ooh. And they gravy and they is tender. Ooh. And just gonna get that done. Ooh, ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I'm gonna add a little bit of liquid so I can deglaze the bottom of that pan right there. Okay, so I'm gonna add just a little bit just to get that stuff off the bottom of that pan. Yes. It's gonna be good, and it's done, y'all. Y'all see how tender it is? It's tearing up, and this is done. This is done, 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 and that is my done, y'all. It didn't take long. Look at the bones just coming off of it. Child, all right, y'all. So. Look at the bones, child. Yes, 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 y'all. That's 
how you do that pork chop. Smothered in gravy, baby. And you don't want no real thick gravy. You want a nice, loose gravy. That way when you put on top of your mashed potatoes or some rice or something that you probably gonna make with it, child honey is just gonna slide right on top of it just right. So let me plate this up for y'all. All right, y'all, so I have my corn casserole, collard greens, and mashed potatoes with smothered pork chop. I hope y'all like this recipe. And if you try it, these recipes, and if you try it, please uh, let me know. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about it. But until next time, it's your girl Tia Not Gonna Be Me. Y'all don't forget to ring that doorbell, hit the phone Three. the like button, Three. and I'll see y'all in the next video. Gotcha. Gotcha.